it made sense to her, we began treating it. Eventually, you know, she now comes back with like samples of water from lakes in Alaska and brings pictures from Germany. And you know, uh, so that's where this whole thing started. I realized that people needed to know why is it that my body is giving me the troubles that it is, and that is the key. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but the body never causes a symptom without a reason. There's always a cause, and there's always a reason. Anyway, so it gives you an idea. So here's a bit of an excerpt. Again, keeping in mind, this is the people's medicine. <clears throat> so over the past several thousand years, oriental medicine has developed into the most comprehensive medical system on the planet, initially passed on via oral tradition and then written word. This work is a humble translation of ancient medical theory from China into layman's contemporary English terminology. This, <clears throat> geez, this is a six year process for any book. I can't believe it. I've never really talked to anybody in a group about this book. <clears throat> Some water. Do you want someone to read? What's that? Do you want someone to read it?
the only way that you can fully deal with a problem in life, including dealing with the body, is if you see the problem for what it truly is. And then when you have that figured out, you can take pieces and parts of it, break it down, and then resolve the issue. That applies to many areas of life, but definitely the human body and how it functions. So you can already see that if you're given an untruth about your specific condition, that you're already going down a wrong road to solve it. And that's where a lot of the problem lies with healthcare in this country. In experience with thousands of patients, I've seen that there are four main areas where Oriental medicine distinguishes itself from conventional Western medicine. In conventional Western medicine, the symptom alone is diagnosed and treated. In Oriental medicine, the underlying cause of a person's symptom is diagnosed and treated to resolve the symptom. That's a very critical and key concept to understand. And unfortunately, in this country, the way the edu educational system is set up for acupuncture, it's also focused on the symptom as well. Uh, since 1949, Mao took over China, destroyed the vast majority of the books that were written about this really ancient and beautiful medicine, and merged Chinese medicine with Western medicine and created a brand new quote unquote science called traditional Chinese medicine, which is TCM. If you were to call clinics and ask, what style of acupuncture do you use? Do you practice TCM? about 95% would say they do. And what that means is that they're addressing the symptom from a Western theory perspective, but using acupuncture to do so. There's kind of a whole reason why that's happening in the educational system, and that's where we differ completely. I mean, philosophically, as acupuncturists, that's where we have a very different viewpoint that we want to get to the reason for the problem. But certainly in Western medicine, the vast majority of the time, they're looking at a symptom rather than an uh, underlying cause. The second difference in conventional Western medicine and Oriental medicine is that the quantities of bodily substances in Western medicine are observed. For example, you'd go in and have blood work done, or you'd have an image of the body uh, shown to you, for example, an MRI or what have you. And these are the most important diagnostic tools that might be used. Uh, however, in Oriental medicine, qualities and relationships between systems in the body are the most important diagnostic tools. So it's the qualities that we're most interested in. Uh, this is relationships. It's understanding how, for example, the liver relates to the digestive system. Uh, as an example, uh, a lot of people come in and they might have acid reflux. And there's many causes. I'm not saying every case is the same by any means. There's many causes of acid reflux. And, and one of those is that the liver can attack the stomach. And there's a relationship, it's a quality, there's a relationship between the liver and the stomach and they interact and they have a, you know, a working relationship, you know, similar to if you, uh, you know, like you were a, a mother and father raising children, you have an interaction and you have things that you're supposed to do and jobs that you're supposed to perform, the liver and the digestive system do the same. Uh, anyway, so, you know, it gives you a bit of an idea. So we're interested in qualities and relationships between systems in the body, and that's the most important diagnostic systems that we can use. And I'll talk about the diagnostics a little later. But first, uh, a few things to go over in the game and play. So this is a, an example of a difference. An acupuncturist may observe, using the diagnostic tools of oriental medicine, that oriental medicine, uh, you know, looking at these different bodily systems, uh, it can be observed that mental stress decreases liver function, and it oftentimes can decrease liver function being under stress for long periods of time. And it would cause the liver to negatively affect the heart, which may constrict the blood vessels, in turn leading to high blood pressure. Okay, so in Oriental medicine, I hope you get, like, this is the logic system of it. Now, there's many forms of high blood pressure. I'm just giving you an example of something that could happen. People say, you know, for example, in Western medicine, you'd say, well, I checked your blood pressure, looked at the systolic and diastolic qualities, and it shows me that stress is causing the high blood pressure without, without really understanding, well, what is the exact mechanism in the body? Now, the problem is, is if you're just seeing this high blood pressure, your automatic response in Western medicine would be to lower blood flow, right? Now, what's the number one side effect of decreasing blood circulation in the body? Anybody guess? Number one side effect of high blood pressure meds? 
fainting is definitely there. Fatigue is the 